Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are in this world. This is Hedgen Lee with an evening update with Bitcoin. So, before we jump into Bitcoin, I just want to take you through some of the, maybe the commonality and some of the charts that I've been putting up and kind of give you maybe a sentiment-based explanation as to why. So I just did an analysis with pay, 10x pay. And if you just take the overall pattern, you'll see a symmetrical triangle. You'll see the clear indications of the hurry up and wait pattern. Here's Bancor, very similar looking symmetrical triangle, except in this case it is an ABCDE. By the way, Bancor should be making a move very soon. It may not yet break out, might have a couple more days, but the pattern between Bancor, 10x pay, it isn't that too different. And we all know this, bit shares, similar symmetrical triangle. Here is an extended fifth. An extended fifth here for uh, 10x. Very similar patterns. Here's a uh, zoomed out view of bit shares but we're showing that extended fifth here as well. So triangle extended fifth, ABC or ABCDE, very common here is ICN. During the hurry up and wait as well, put in the um, impulse five waves without wasting any time, ABC, it's just about done. And the infamous Bitcoin Cash had this huge triangle going. Got a lot of people frust frustrated for a while. And look, it's doing the gate broke out. So amongst all of these triangle uh, charts, Bitcoin Cash has been the first one to bust out. So if we go back here, I think it's just about done for 10x. It's going to bust out as well. It's going to breach out in, and beyond and above this abo uh, white line. For Banco, same thing's going to happen. We're not going to see Banco at 2 or under, under 2 for very long at all. A few more days at most. But any time. They could bust out. For Bancor, the apex, the point where the two lines of the triangle cross intersect, the closer the price comes to the apex, the more agitated it gets and pent up in its desire to bust out of this triangle. So there is a term in, um, in a analysis for a technical analysis, and that is called all the same market. And what that means is that sentiment is pretty uniform. I'm sure that even in the stock market, you quite often see maybe the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ almost moving in a very correlated fashion. And that's because sentiment is pretty uniform across the markets. Now, from that perspective, it's really no different for the cryptos and that sentiment. It ha is pretty uniform across all of the altcoins. But, and as a result, and as a result of the uniformity of that sentiment, you get very similar patterns across the board almost. And that uniformity of the patterns that you're seeing here and the similarity index of the patterns is very high because of the uniformity of the sentiment. Now, 
usually symmetrical triangles represent a period of consolidation with a certain level of uncertainty as to whether it's going to go up or down. But Elliot, that's, from a pattern perspective, it's hard to tell. But what, that's why I combine Elliot waves and chart pattern to decipher those types of um, conundrums. Because just the pattern itself, you don't know whether it's, it'll go up or not. But when you use Elliot rays, for example, in this case, A, B, C, D, E, when the E is in the bottom of the of the uh, supporting line, then the greater tendency is for the price to break out and above. And therefore, Elliot waves helps to resolve such types of confounding issues that just pattern alone could have. Now, here's the same thing. We also know that with an extended fifth, you have a huge, very deep retracement. And my goodness, for bit share, this has been very deep, okay, probably 90 plus percent. But again, the similarity index in the pattern as w with regards to the triangle here shows up. And in, in a very similar timing as well, across the time. And they all happen after five wave hurry up sequence. Same thing with the ICN hurry up sequence. Now the similarity of the sentiment across the board, all the same market is giving, again, a very similar chart pattern, very similar early wave count. And these are not accidents. It happens because of the uniformity of sentiment. So I, I'm sure that some of you have been considering this. You might be thinking, boy, every chart that hedge and put side is a bullish chart with a 300 percent, 400 percent, 100 whatever percent, or 21 fold. It's not something that I'm making up. It's because I'm reading the charts and I'm seeing myself when I'm seeing that kind of consistent bullish calls on the altcoins. I realize, and I know why, from a uh, sentiment perspective. It's all the same market, basically. Sentiment is pretty uniform across the board. And as a result, remember, price is nothing but the reflection of sentiment. And that means if sentiment is pretty uniform, then so will the price. And as a result, so will the pattern. And so will the Elliott wave count be pretty similar. So the similarity index, if it is high, at the level of sentiment. It'll be high at the level of price. And that sent, uh, similarity index in Elliott wave count will be high, and the similarity index in the chart pattern will be high. So I, th I just wanted to take you through that because I'm sure some of you might be scratching your heads thinking that I'm, I'm, not, I'm uber or rather permeable on, on the altcoins. Not necessarily. I'm just trying to um, see that the sentiment is driving all of these similarity indexes. Okay, so back to Bitcoin. We're looking at the one hour chart, and these are the labels and markings that we had from earlier this morning. I had pointed out this smaller bull flag, as well as the uh, other larger fractals of it. Sure enough, prices did break out of that bull flag. And then I'm making another one right here. And it broke out of that too. Now it's doing a downward pointing triangle which is nothing but a consolidation, and this is going to go higher, I think. We're going to see maybe a higher high. This is interesting because this then will have one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So it ad either already has a five. Let me get rid of these flag markings mm. so you can see it better. So 
It has either already five waves, but I don't think so. I think this is one, two, three, four, and we're going to see a five. <coughs> So the <coughs> we, if we go back a little bit, this is wave one, two, and then we're going to go to three. Either this will be a three here, or this five will get stretched. This is going near vertical here. It might go near vertical as well. It might get stretched extended so that now this becomes three let's get rid of some of these lines here as well so that this will approach 666 two now if this is a five one two three, four, and five, then it'll correct. But let's see how this plays out. This will be the updated count. The only thing that concerns me here is that it's moving really fast. Wondering how much more time it'll give the altcoins to do their bull ones. But let's see what happens, okay? Now there's another thing that I wanted to bring you, bring to your attention that I had been thinking about. And I'm gonna switch gears a little bit here. <coughs> so here's a PowerPoint. This is that of the industrials, Dow, Dow Jones Industrials. And and this is a, um, since 2000 2008-9 financial crisis bottom to present day. There was a guy who was calling the top here, didn't happen call the top here. Well, he was calling the top here, then changed his top call to here. And when he was coming down, I was like, oh, look, I called that, I called that. I used my Elliott Waves, Fibonacci's, now we're going to go to Dow 4, 400. This is just a temporary reprieve, and he used a lot of deep Elliott wave analysis too. He also pointed out this head and shoulders pattern here and just pff, it said this is gonna go we're gonna go see a lower low. Lower than what we saw on the bottom of the two thousand and nine, March of not two thousand nine. Didn't work. But still stayed bear stayed bearish. And and around 2011, when it was turning down again, he said, oh, this is for real. Now we're going to see a real downturn, and we're going to see this low break. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> and this is the one where QE1, QE2, and 3 were happening. But he still stayed bearish. And he said, by 2016, we're going to see Dow 400 and S&P 40 or 50. Meanwhile, the, the uh, Dow was just making orgasmic lunges upwards. Even here, he remained bearish. And 
when I saw him going through this, I learned a big lesson. You cannot be so inflexible because it'll kill you. It'll destroy your profits that you might have been made on the downside by staying perma bearish throughout calling for a what did he call it a um, when he was calling for what's called the super cycle tens of years to grand super cycle at the level of century uh, tops that is which is just that one of the biggest, biggest tops you can fathom it means that civilization will be destroyed <laughs> if it crashes from there, let's say. I'm exaggerating. But in watching this guy just get burnt after every call, whenever there was a pig, he called it. Pfft, didn't work here. Pfft, got burnt. Got burnt. And they even came up with used his last name to come up with exactly that, where you be remain inflexible, in this case, remain bearish, perma bearish, and get burned every time by the market, by a bull market. Now, here, I'm more interested in here. I don't really follow him anymore but I learned a big lesson and that lesson was don't remain inflexible be willing to change but more importantly the bottom line lesson is you follow the trend the trend is your friend if you go against your friend you if you go against the trend you're dead now I want to I want to point out here this top line trend prices have been trending within this channel and the number of, I mean the number of bears that came out here also it was not even funny they were trying to call oh we're going to see the Dow 500 again <laughs> well you know didn't happen <coughs> and now Prices have busted out of this. And usually, if you, if you look back to the dot-com bubble, prices busted out of this as well, out of the channel. And when the price busts out decisively and stays out, and it is not come, goes out and comes right back in, which would be a bearish wick, but in this case, for the Dow, it just, on Friday, I mean, the move was massive. And stays there. That's a different story. If you recall, I've been saying, if prices bust out of this decisive, decisively, and stays above and gives no tendency of wanting to come back down, it's a different story. So here, <coughs> at least for the Dow, it's a different story, but let's draw some lines. Because I was drawing some lines here, and I'm going to make this red, just so you can see it, and thick. Let's make it black.
<clears throat> now look at the pattern. We're looking at the wedge. An upward pointing wedge. I can count here one, two, three, four, five as well. And poof, it just busted through there. Like hot knife through butter. And it's staying up there. It's not showing any tendency of wanting to come back down. So that's a different story. It can negate this pattern is what I'm trying to say. It can negate it. And look how vertical this looks. If you remember the dot-com bubble, the very end of a bubble goes vertical. Just I don't know exactly how long it'll last. And we go back here. If this goes vertical, if this goes poof like this, this is not a bullish, uh, bearish wick. This is called a top, the uh, uh, um, a bubble that is a blow off top. Sorry, it's like blowing off top, and it go near vertical. And usually in this kind of situation, you don't get just 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. You get a double. So what do we six? We'll go to 12. And it goes near vertical. And the wave five in that case will be extended. It's like if you've ever seen a uh, a can <coughs> I used to do chemistry experiments and have some flour dry flour in a can and you would aerate it and then light a ignite a fl a, a flint and it'll just blow up the can and the top the ca of the can is open has an opening uh, has a no, uh, cover, and the cover would just blow off straight up into the air. And that's almost the effect here. And if this is becomes more probable, then you want to stay in for this and catch it and profit from it. then you want to catch and profit from this. And I'm, I'm mentioning this because I learned a valuable lesson from watching that fellow, who, by the way, is the author of that book, Elliott Way Principles, Robert Proctor. Just get creamed after each and every peak because of his lack of and unwillingness to see it in any other way except his own myopic viewpoint. And here is a similar pattern in the industrials and in the S&P. 
Similarity index is high in sentiment with the equities as well. Getting this blow off. And this could mean, I could see Dow 40,000. Which would be fantastic for your retirement accounts to be fully invested. And here I will not, I mean, I've been calling this, I've been calling for caution, I still am. That is still my primary account. But I will not be myopic and closed off from any other th probabilities, which is something like this. What will give greater credence of this happening? Blow off topping. Once this upper white line of the triangle is pierced and you see prices just going to your vertical and you s I mean not buy just. If it's a bearish rig you see maybe two, three, five hundred points and come right back down. But once you start passing seventy two hundred, that's not a bearish wick. That's a blow off topping process. Or even at sixty eight hundred or so. Once it goes, blows past 6,800, you stay where you are and sell here. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. Now, what happens after that? Well, this is a blow off topping of a bubble. Then you see this. This is a real last final hurrah. And it negates this pattern. But it does not negate the Elliott Wave count because Wave 5 just gets extended. So what I'm going to do is keep a real close eye on what happens within the 6800 zone to 7200 zone. If, if the vigor or the price rise is almost just orgasmic lunges upward near vertical then you got a different story yeah this blow off top story and it could take a little while too to maybe into December I don't know One of the most difficult things about time to project on the length of the time is very difficult. But we know one thing for sure, the hurry up and wait syndrome. Whenever there's a five wave, it's going to happen in no time. Whenever there's a correction, it's going to take its freaking time forever. For bitches, if it's going to go to, let's say, a dollar, and it goes that to that to that one dollar stage in an impulse, it's not going to waste any time. We can do it in a month or less, or two months. can go near vertical. So my current thought behind all of this is that while Bitcoin is blowing off its top, all of the altcoins crouching, getting ready to pounce and jump along with Bitcoin. This will be a massive phasic bull run in phase with Bitcoin. While the altcoins have not been rising like exactly like uh, Bitcoin had been, rather it's been bite, biting its time 
It's like a cat. I have two cats. <coughs> when they're ready to pounce, they crouch. And then they wiggle their butts ready to pounce. And they take their time. And all the old coins, so I think, have been in that getting ready phase to their, to do their part of their near vertical vice. What does that mean? Look, same thing here. Banco has been waiting, crouching, just compressing its vigor to jump. Not to nine, but let's say a lot more than that. But when, the, when it goes near vertical like this, when sentiment turns uber bullish, there's nothing that'll stop it. With EOS, even two million coins a month won't be able to stop it. I couldn't care less how, even if it was four million coins a month. Nothing can drive sentiment more than sentiment itself. And nothing can stop it except sentiment itself. Not the fundamentals. Here too, Petrius. It'll go near vertical. It's waiting. It's crouching. It's got a very high index in the similarity of pattern wave count and sentiment. And once this happens, it'll be a sight to behold on the bullish side. And on a longer term perspective, my God, it could be a different story. I see and he's crouching, waiting for this. It's just a matter of time. And on the side of Bitcoin, I think that flint trigger will be once it decisively breaks past this upper line of resistance. So let's keep a close eye on this from now to 6800 to 7200. I'll probably know even before that, just by looking at the vigor of its rise. It's not going to be one of those sharp rise and, and dump. If that's not what it's going to be, then that's how bearish wicks happen. But if it rises with strength and then starts going vertical because of all the foremost gets caught up, We could look at something like this as well. I don't know. <coughs> but I do know this is could go from possible to probable. And I think in the stock market too, we're going to see the similar blow off of the top. In the dot-com era, I think it lasted, what, six months? The blow-off top lasted six whole months. And usually after, October has been pretty seasonally weak, but usually after October and into December and the New Year's, so November, December, January, that's three months at least, February, March, April time frame, that makes perfect cycle sense because May, they say sell in May and go away, right? So May might be the time or April when it tops and it just starts turning and crashing. And that's when you jump back into bonds and into gold. I don't think now is the time to buy the gold. I think now it's time to divert more into the equities. And from an allocation point of view, what I have been doing is diverting more of my bond allocation into equity allocation. I've, I've done that a long time, few, more, 
four, six weeks ago. And in one of my blogs, I did indicate the po possibility of this, and I think it's now it's very probable in the equities. So I wanted to just share that viewpoint with you that I am not going to be an inflexible, myopic, technical analyst. I've learned my lessons. A lot of times you can s learn lessons from personal experience, but also from watching others going through a slow train wreck. And, and if indicators, signals, price actions, price personalities call for me to change my views. Damn, I, I don't have any issues changing my views. But that's what a good technical analyst does. They go with the trend. They go with the flow. They try to figure out what the trend is. If the trend is going to be this, I'm going to go with that flow. If you fight the trend, you're going to be destroyed. And um, from a short-term perspective, it may reflect that as well. I mean, here you're seeing a little ver vertical move here as well. So I think some exciting days might be ahead of us. It's a boy wheel. Now we're going to see a real downturn, and we're going to see this low break. And <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> and this is the one where QE1, QE2, and 3 were happening. But he still stayed bearish. And he said by 2016, we're going to see Dow 400 and S&P 40 or 50. Meanwhile, the, the uh, Dow was just making orgasmic lunges upwards. Even here, he remained bearish. And when I saw him going through this, I learned a big lesson. You cannot be so inflexible because it'll kill you. It'll destroy your profits that you might have been made on the downside by staying perma bearish throughout calling for a what did he call it? A, um, when he was calling for what's called the super cycle, tens of years to grand super cycle at the level of century uh, tops, that is, which is just the one of the biggest, biggest tops you can fathom means that civilization will be destroyed <laughs> if it crashes from there, let's say. I'm exaggerating. But in watching this guy just get burnt after every call, whenever there was a peak, he called it. Pfft, didn't work here. Pfft, got burnt. Got burnt. And they even came up with, used his last name to come up with exactly that, where you... Be remain inflexible, in this case, remain bearish, Palmer bearish, and get burned every time by the market, by a bull market. Now, here, I'm more interested in here. I don't really follow him anymore, but I learned a big lesson. And that lesson was don't remain inflexible. Be willing to change. But more importantly, the bottom line lesson is you follow the trend. The trend is your friend. If you go against your friend, you're, if you go against the trend, you're dead. Now, I want to I want to point out here this. Case A, B, C, D, E. When the E is in the bottom of the of the uh, supporting line, then the greater tendency is for the price to break out and above 
and therefore Elliot Weaves helps to resolve such types of confounding issues that just pattern alone could have. Now here's the same thing. We also know that with an extended fifth, you have a huge, very deep retracement. And my goodness, for bit here, this has been very deep. Okay, probably 90 plus percent. But again, the similarity index in the pattern as w with regards to the triangle here shows up. And in, in a very similar timing as well, across the time. And they all happen after five wave hurry up sequence. Same thing with the ICN hurry up sequence. Now the similarity of the sentiment across the board, all the same market is giving, again, a very similar chart pattern, very similar early wave count. And these are not accidents. It happens because of the uniformity of sentiment. So I, I'm sure that some of you have been considering this. You might be thinking, boy, every chart that Hedge and puts out is a bullish chart with a 300%, 400%, 100-whatever percent, or 21-fold. It's not something that I'm making up. It's because I'm reading the charts and I'm seeing myself when I'm seeing that kind of consistent bullish calls on the altcoins. I realize, and I know why, from a... Uh, sentiment perspective it's all the same market basically sentiment is pretty uniform across the board and as a result remember price is nothing but the reflection of sentiment and that means if sentiment is pretty uniform then so will the price and as a result so will the pattern and so will the Elliott wave count be pretty similar so the similarity index, if it is high at the level of sentiment, it'll be high at the level of price. And that sent, uh, similarity index in Elliott wave count will be high, and the similarity index in the chart pattern will be high. So I, th I just wanted to take you through that because I'm sure some of you might be scratching your heads thinking that I'm, I'm, not, I'm uber or rather permeable on, on the altcoins, not necessarily. I'm just trying to um, see that the sentiment is driving all of this and profit from it. Then you want to catch and profit from this. And I'm, I'm mentioning this because I learned a valuable lesson from watching that fellow, who, by the way, is the author of that book, Elliott Wave Principles, Robert Proctor, just get creamed after each and every peak because of his lack of an unwillingness to see it in any other way except his own myopic viewpoint. And here is a similar pattern in the industrials and in the S&P. Similarity index is high in sentiment with the in equities as well. Getting this blow off. And this could mean, I could see Dow 40,000. Which would be fantastic for your retirement accounts to be fully invested. And here I will not, I mean, I've been calling this, I've been calling for caution, I still am. That is still my primary account. But I will not be myopic and closed off from any other th probabilities, which is something like this. What will give greater credence of this happening? Blow off topping. Once this upper white line of the triangle is pierced and you see prices just going near vertical and you, s I mean, not by just. If it's a bearish wig, you see maybe two, three, five hundred points and come right back down. 
But once you start passing 7200, that's not a bearish wick. That's a blow off topping process. Or even at 6800 or so. Once it goes blows past 6800, you stay where you are and sell here. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. Now, what happens after that? Well, this is a blow off topping of a bubble. Then you see this. This is a real last final hurrah. And a deep Elliott wave analysis too. He also pointed out this head and shoulders pattern here and just pff, it said this is gonna go we're gonna go see a lower low. Lower than what we saw on the bottom of the two thousand and nine, March of not two thousand nine. Didn't work. But still stayed bear stayed bearish. And in around 2011, when it was turning down again, he said, oh, this is for real. Now we're going to see a real downturn, and we're going to see this low break. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> and this is around where QE1, QE2, and 3 were happening. But he still stayed bearish. And he said, by 2016, we're going to see Dow 400 and S&P 40 or 50. Meanwhile, the, the as, uh, Dow was just making orgasmic lunges upwards. Even here he remained bearish. And when I saw him going through this, I learned a big lesson. You cannot be so inflexible because it'll kill you. It'll destroy your profits that you might have been made on the downside by staying perma bearish throughout calling for a what did he call it a um, when he was calling for what's called the super cycle tens of years to grand super cycle at the level of century uh, tops, that is, which is just the, one of the biggest, biggest tops you can fathom. It means that civilization will be destroyed <laughs> if it crashes from there, let's say. I'm exaggerating. But in watching this guy just get burnt after every call, whenever there was a peak, he called it. Pff, didn't work here. Pff, got burnt. Got burnt. And they even came up with, used his last name to come up with exactly that, where you be remain inflexible, in this case, remain bearish, Palmer bearish, and get burned every time by the market, by a bull market. Now, here, I'm more interested in here. I don't really follow him anymore. Oh, he was calling the top here, then changed his top call to heel. And when he was coming down, I was like, oh, look, I call that, I call that. I use my Elliott Waves, Fibonacci's. Now we're going to go to Dow 4, 400. This is just a temporary reprieve, and he used a lot of deep Elliott wave analysis too. He also pointed out this head and shoulders pattern here and just pff, it said this is gonna go we're gonna go see a lower low. Lower than what we saw on the bottom of the two thousand and nine, March of not two thousand nine. Didn't work. But still stayed bear stayed bearish. And and around 2011, when it was turning down again, he said, oh, this is for real. Now we're going to see a real downturn, and we're going to see this low break. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> and this is around where QE1, QE2, and 3 were happening. 
but he still stayed bearish. And he said, by 2016, we're going to see Dow 400 and S&P 40 or 50. Meanwhile, the, the uh, Dow was just making orgasmic lunges upwards. Even here, he remained bearish. And when I saw him going through this, I learned a big lesson. You cannot be so inflexible because it'll kill you. It'll destroy your profits that you might have been made on the downside by staying perma bearish throughout, calling for a what did he call it? A um, when he was calling for what's called the super cycle, tens of years to grand super cycle at the level of century uh, tops, that is, which is just the one of the biggest, biggest tops you can fathom. It means that civilization will be destroyed <laughs> if he crashes from there, let's say. I'm exaggerating. But in watching this guy just get burnt, after every call, whenever there was a peak, he called it. Pfft, didn't work here. Pfft, got burnt. Got burnt. And they even came up with, used his last name to come up with and sell here. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. Now, what happens after that? Well, this is a blow off topping of a bubble. Then you see this. This is a real last final hurrah. And it negates this pattern. But it does not negate the elite wave count because wave five just gets extended. So what I'm gonna do is keep a real close eye on what happens within the 6800 zone to 7200 zone. If if the vigor or the price rise is almost just orgasmic lunges upward near vertical, then you got a different story. Yeah, this blow off top story. And it could take a little while too. to maybe into December, I don't know. One of the most difficult things about time to project on the length of the time is very difficult. But we know one thing for sure, the hurry up and wait syndrome. Whenever there's a five wave, it's gonna happen in no time. Whenever there's a correction, it's gonna take its freaking time forever. For bitches, if it's going to go to, let's say, a dollar, and it goes that to that, to that one dollar stage in an impulse, it's not going to waste any time. We can do it in a month or less, or two months. go near vertical. So my current thought behind all of this is that while Bitcoin is blowing off its top, all of the altcoins crouching, getting ready to pounce and jump along with Bitcoin. This will, or even at 6,800 or so. Once it goes, blows past 6,800, you stay where you are and sell here.
I hope what I'm saying is making sense. Now, what happens after that? Well, this is a blow off topping of a bubble. Then you see this. This is a real last final hurrah. And it negates this pattern. But it does not negate the elite wave count because wave five just gets extended. So what I'm gonna do is keep a real close eye on what happens within the 6800 zone to 7200 zone. If, if the vigor or the price rise is almost just orgasmic lunges upward near vertical, then you got a different story. Yeah, this blow off top story. And it could take a little while too to maybe into December, I don't know. One of the most difficult things about time to project on the length of the time is very difficult. But we know one thing for sure, the hurry up and wait syndrome. Whenever there's a five wave, that's gonna happen in no time. Whenever there's a correction, it's gonna take its freaking time forever. For bitches, if it's gonna go to, let's say, a dollar, and it goes that to that to that one dollar stage in an impulse. It's not going to waste any time. We can do it in a month or less, or two months. We can go near vertical. So. My current thought behind all of this is that while Bitcoin is blowing off its top, all of the altcoins, this is that of the industrials, Dow, Dow Jones Industrials, and And this is a, um, since 2000 fina 2008, nine financial crisis bottom to present day. There was a guy who was calling the top here, didn't happen, called the top here. Well, he was calling the top here, then changed his top call to here. And when it was coming down, I was like, oh, look, I called that, I called that. I used my Elliott Waves, Fibonacci's, now we're going to go to Dow 4, 400. This is just a temporary reprieve, and he used a lot of deep Elliott Wave analysis, too. He also pointed out this head and shoulders pattern here, and just it said this is going to go we're going to go see a lower low lower than what we saw on the bottom of the 2009 March of not 2009 didn't work but still stayed bear stayed bearish and in around 2011 when it was turning down again he said oh this is for real now we're going to see a real downturn and we're going to see this low break <laughs> and it didn't and this is the one where QE1, QE2, and 3 were happening. But he still stayed bearish. And he said by 2016, we're going to see Dow 400 and S&P 40 or 50. Meanwhile, the, the uh, Dow was just making orgasmic lunges upwards. Even here, he remained bearish. And when I saw him going through this, I learned a big lesson. 
you cannot be so inflexible because it'll kill you. It'll destroy your profits that you might have been made on the downside by staying perma bearish throughout calling for a what did he call it a um, when he was calling for what's called the super cycle tens of years to grand super cycle at the level of century Now look at the pattern. We're looking at the wedge. An upward pointing wedge. I can count here one, two, three, four, five as well. And poof, it just busted through there. Like hot knife through butter. And it's staying up there. It's not showing any tendency of wanting to come back down. So that's a different story. It can negate this pattern is what I'm trying to say. It can negate it. And look how vertical this looks. If you remember the dot-com bubble, the very end of a bubble goes vertical, just I don't know exactly how long it'll last. And we go back here. If this goes vertical, if this goes poof like this, This is not a bullish, uh, bearish wick. This is called a top, the uh, uh, um, a bubble that is a blow off top. Sorry, it's like blowing off top, and it'll go near vertical. And usually in this kind of situation. You don't get just 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. You get a double. So what do we six? We'll go to 12. And it goes near vertical. And the wave five in that case will be extended.